Thanks for clicking on this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Rip Jersey Podcast. If Kenny Lofton gets the ball down, he can pull it. That's his long ball, down and in. It's October 19th, 2002. The Angels and Giants are both coming off of spectacular championship series wins and are now in baseball's first ever all wild card World Series. Last year, no one would have predicted this matchup would happen. I mean, it'd be crazy to think. Neither team had even made the 2001 postseason, let alone the World Series. But as sports is known to go against the grain of everyone's beliefs, Lightning struck once again in 2002 to create this unlikely matchup. And so, here we are. One of these teams was going to go home with their first World Series title. Each team was stacked in their own way. However, it seems as if the Giants had the edge with arguably the greatest hitter of all time in Barry Bonds on their roster. But somehow, this series wasn't only decided by the talent that was on the field. No, the difference happened outside of the foul ball lines, and even past the first row of stands. All the way to the Jumbotron, into the fandom of one culprit. One mysterious individual that took the series in baseball by storm. On June 6, 2000, in a game against, ironically, the Giants at Angel Stadium, the Angels' two video operators, Dean and Jason, decided to play a video of a monkey jumping around, just to add some fun to the game. The original origin was a movie scene from Jim Carrey's Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Hey! Spike! Spike! Another Angel employee, Peter Bull, was in charge of checking crowd reactions and noticed how well the fans were enjoying it. The Angels weren't very good at the time, so anything to get the crowd involved and an engagement was a plus. So the monkey video stayed. And in the ninth inning, the guys made some tweaks to the video. Against the Giants, the operators put the monkey back on the screen, this time with the words rally monkey above it. And wouldn't you know it, the Angels stormed back to win thanks to RBI singles from Darren Ernstead and Mo Vaughn. Now, nobody seems to know why the monkey video worked or the science behind it, but the 6-5 win changed everything for the Angels organization. And thus, the Rally Monkey was born. Let's fast forward two years. So you remember how I said no one would believe that these two teams would be in the 2002 World Series? Well, that mainly holds true because of how bad the 2001 Angels were. That year, the Angels were 41 games out of first place at the American League West, and it didn't look much better at the start of the 2002 season, as the Angels began the year with 6 wins and 14 losses. In fact, it was the worst start in the history of the franchise. But obviously, it couldn't have been all bad, because the Angels wouldn't be in the World Series. So as history states, the Halos came together as a team and turned it around thanks to the surge and in May, the Angels won 20 of 23 games and even put up 21 runs in a game which was the most runs scored by the Angels since August 25th, 1979. Now you may be thinking, that's an incredible run. How did I never hear about this? Well, a lot of the baseball landscape was distracted by one astonishing baseball phenomenon. A 19 game winning streak on the line here for the A's. The front runners in the American League West right now three up on the Angels. Swung on, fly ball, deep right field, they've done it again! You see, 2002 was the year of the Moneyball Oakland A's in their 20 game win streak. If you're not familiar with the Moneyball A's, it's where Oakland put together a group of makeshift players based solely on analytics to try to win the World Series with one of the smallest budgets in all of baseball. And for a full season, it was working. Ground ball to second baseman Randy Velarde. The ball game is over. The A's win it five to three, and the Oakland A's are the champions in the American League West for 2002. So the Angels were flying under the radar with the team in their division changing the way baseball would be played, and so that's where the Angels stayed under the radar of the Oakland A's as they finished behind them with 99 wins and 63 losses to advance to the AL wild card. From there, the road was tough. 
as they had to go through the Mariners, who had won 116 games in the previous year. And in the ALDS, they had to go through Derek Jeter and the New York Yankees, a team that had just lost in the World Series in heartbreaking fashion just a year prior. And finally, the Minnesota Twins, a team that had knocked out the Oakland A's in the postseason. Basically, this was the year of the Angels, and nothing was going to stop them. In year 42 of his franchise's history, it was time for the Angels to prevail. On an 0-2 pitch from a left-handed pitcher, Adam Kennedy hits his third home run of the game. Oh, what a moment at Edison Field. On clinching day, Adam Kennedy became just the third player in LCS history to hit three home runs in one day to lead the Angels over Minnesota for a trip to the World Series for the first time in franchise history. An exciting day nonetheless, and one that would change everything for the Angels. On the other side, the Giants were surging. It had much to do with their power hitter. Barry Bonds was coming off a 2001 season where he broke the home run record with 73 home runs, and he was having another great season with 46. But throughout his successful career, he was missing some postseason production. It was the one tarnished on his career. Well, other than, well, you know. Bonds had one home run in six RBI and 97 playoff at bats and had yet to win a playoff series in five attempts. But like for the Angels, they had all changed in 2002. Bonds was on fire and the Giants walked off to earn a spot in the World Series. And so, finally on the game's biggest stage, he wasted no time and he delivered. It's like a softball defense for Bonds. And that's crushed into right field. First World Series at bat, home run Bonds. And Bonds' first at bat in his first World Series on his first swing, he hit a no-doubt home run over the right field wall. Sanders and Glaus also hit home runs in the second inning, and their first three hits of the World Series were home runs. So that was the first time it happened in World Series history. Either way, one of the best World Series kicked off with a bang. The Giants took game one on the road 4-3, thanks to multiple home runs ending with JT Snow's game ceiling bomb. Then the Angels bounced back with 11-10 game two win after Tim Salmon hit a two-run shot in the eighth inning. In game three, the Angels took a sizable 10-4 win with the help of a pair of four-run innings in the third and fourth inning, before the Giants tied the series in game four with a 4-3 win after David Bell knocked in Snow with an RBI single in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the Giants took a pivotal game five with a 16-4 win, playing 10 runs in the sixth and seventh and eighth innings, moving to just one win away from his World Series championship. But then came game six. That's where it all happened. After the Giants, Barry Bonds hammered his fourth home run of the series. And he's been able to swing the bat. That is crushed oh, deep into the night, and it's four to nothing. San Francisco. And the Giants, Kenny Lofton scored one more time in the seventh inning to make it 5-0. All hope looked lost for the Angels. If the MLB had one of those stat charts that showed the win probability of teams in 2002, it would have read 99% chance in the Giants' favor. The Angels had lost game one of the division series, the League Championship Series, and the World Series. No team had ever won a World Series title after doing that since the division series began play in 1995. And so, the victory platform was set up in the Giants clubhouse, the trophy was there, the commissioner was there, the champagne was all ready for the World Series shenanigans. But one moment can change everything. One final rally. One final push. It was all because of that monkey. The same monkey that made his first appearance two years ago against the Giants was up to no good again. And it had worked all season. The Angels had 43 comeback wins that year, 18 of which while trailing in the seventh inning. And the Angels' title hopes turned with one swing. Rodriguez sets the 3 2 pitch, is belted to right field. Back on it goes Sanders at the wall. He can't get it. Home run. And Scott Spezio hit his famous three run home run. The Angels then scored three more runs in the eighth inning to win the game 6 to 5. In game six, the Angels stormed from behind in the seventh and eighth innings. The Angels' game six comeback was the greatest by a World Series team facing elimination. There was a lot that changed this game. Barry Bonds' missed catch, Dusty Baker pulling the starting pitcher too early, but in reality, it was the monkey. Soon after, the Angels won their first World Series in Game 7, cruising to a 4-1 win. The 2002 Angels didn't have the best players, or historical resume like other franchises, but they did have one fanatic that brought the entire city together. 
And with the city behind them, the Angels became one of the greatest teams in all of baseball. And that's all they ever really needed. Driven into right center field. Erstad says he has it. The Angels, world champions. 